Perfect. We have Hannah Call from uh, UC Davis, who is going to share her talk on entomology and some really cool insect research happening in the Central Valley. I will let Hannah introduce herself further and share her talk. At the end of this presentation, if you have any questions, you can type them in the comments of the video and Hannah will do her best to answer all of the great questions you have for her. Great, thank you for the introduction, Spencer. I'm going to get my presentation set up right now. Um, let's see. Great, so as Spencer mentioned, I'm a PhD student at UC Davis and I'm an entomologist. And you might be wondering, what is an entomologist? Well, an entomologist is someone who studies insects and I actually study insects to also help produce food for the world. So I'm sure everyone loves food and all of these crops, every crop that I can even think of has very important ties to insects. How might this be? Well, there's many roles that insects can play in agriculture. There's pollinators and you can see these pictures where there's a bumblebee pollinating what I think is blueberries and there's a honeybee and these pollinators transfer pollen from plant to plant and actually allow the plant to create those fruits or vegetables that we all love. Also, there are insects that serve um, a more negative role in agriculture. And these are considered pests. There's many different diverse pests. They can be beetles, moths, um, you have um, some larva chewing on the oranges right above there. And that's um, a small baby insect. Uh, I think that that's probably a fly larva. And so there's many different types of pests. And so the role of um, my research is to try to help manage pests in agricultural systems. One way that pests can be managed in agricultural systems is with the help of natural enemies. Natural enemies are actually insects that consume other insects, pest insects, and help us with the fight against pest insects. So basically you can see um, an insect consuming aphids, an insect consuming um, what looks to be scales in the middle here. And this last picture is actually of a parasitoid wasp that's laying its eggs inside an aphid. And then the young of the wasp will develop inside the aphid. So there's many different types of natural enemies as well. My research in specific is in the San Joaquin Valley in California, which is the region shown in orange on the map. And this is a really dominant agricultural region where many different crops are produced. And this is um, one of the major crops produced there is citrus. And so my research really works with citrus in the San Joaquin Valley. More specifically, my research tries to attempt to understand chewing damage on citrus fruits. So what this entails is that when the fruit is very small and green, as you can see in this picture, uh, there's several different insects that will chew holes into the fruits. And as that fruit develops, that fruit that hole on that young fruit can become a large scar on the mature fruit that you can see in orange here. And farmers can't sell that fruit that has a big scar on it for as much money. And so they can lose a lot of money if their fruits are scarred like this. Also, we can lose a lot of citrus um, that can't be sold. So what kind of insects do this kind of damage? Well, there's katydids, which is shown in this top picture here. And there's um, caterpillars. Um, and there's a couple that will chew holes into the fruit. And then there's also earwigs. And a lot of my research actually looks specifically at earwigs. 
although I worked also with the Katie Dids and Caterpillars. So earwigs are interesting because they are not normally thought to necessarily be a, a pest on citrus especially. People are just starting to understand that they might actually be chewing holes into the citrus fruit. And they're just starting to recognize that. Not much is known about this. Earwigs also are confusing because they can also be a natural enemy and consume pests in the citrus system. So in order to test whether earwigs consume citrus fruits, I do cage experiments in the field. And so this is when I put cages onto branch branches that have these young fruits. And then I put the insects inside these cages. And then I remove the cages and I check the fruits to see if they're damaged. And I also record all of this and try to understand what this is telling me. In the experiment that I'm really going to talk about, I caged earwigs that are nips. Um, and so an earwig nip is basically just a young earwig. And I also caged earwig adults, and I caged katydid, katydids as well. Um, and earwig, this is because earwig nymphs are thought to cause more damage. <laughs> this just shows what I found, basically. There, there's um, on the y-axis here, we have the mean proportion of fruit damaged across cage. And on the x-axis, we have many, all of the different treatments that I caged on to the branches. And so you can see here that um, the black represents damage that's very, very serious. And the lighter colors um, represent less serious damage with the white being no damage. So you can see that these fruits were heavily damaged by katydids but they were also damaged by earwigs with more damage occurring with earwig nips, just as we thought. So the major findings is that earwigs can chew deep holes into citrus fruits. Earwigs and katydids cause lots of damage to, um, we also found that they cause lots of damage to navel oranges, but less and sometimes no damage to certain mandarin species. Young earwigs, especially earwig nymphs, cause the most damage. And um, the future research that we hope to look at is whether earwigs are also beneficial. Are they natural enemies? Um, do they cause more harm or more good? And how do we stop earwigs from causing damage to citrus? Perfect. So, Thank perfect. you, Hannah. Um, that was great. Um, so at this point, we are going to open the presentation up to various people who've submitted questions. And the one that I have to get us going off the bat is, um, how did you first become interested in the sciences? Yeah, so uh, I think that ever since I was little, I always tried to identify different um, organisms that I found. I had uh, an interest in marine biology, and I've always had an interest in insects. So ever since I was little, everywhere I would go, I would try to read books and guides to try to help determine what, um, what I'm looking at, really. Trying to understand the natural world is something that fascinated me when I was really young. And later on, I became really interested in the human altered world too. So the crop systems um, are actually, they have such a diversity of different insects and it's very meaningful to people as well, um, what these insects do. So that's how I kind of came to do what I'm doing right now. That's great, Hannah. So my second question for you is, was there ever a time when you had a, a failure or a setback or problem that you needed to, to work through or solve? And, and how did you figure out how to find a solution or a workaround to do that? Um, so I, I'd say that with field experiments, um, you hardly ever get it right the first time. 
um, that you design a field experiment. Um, something fails. But these failures aren't necessarily true failures um, in the sense that every failure teaches you something. Um, so for instance, um, another uh, insect that we work with is thrips. And we tried to design an experiment looking at how adding thrips to the fruits influences the fruits. And um, with the with the thrips, they just actually ended up dropping off the fruit. And so what we learned is that thrips um, develop really fast and then they just drop off the fruit. So you change your experimental method and you learn something about the system along the way. And so I think that's my motto in life in, in general too. So it happens a lot in the experimental world and in life, I think that a lot of times you learn a lot through failure that you wouldn't have expected and sometimes it's actually more meaningful than the experiment going as planned or you know your life going exactly as you planned um that's great and so another question that we had um from our audience was are there other types of plants that we know that earwigs might damage um is it just the citrus crops or or how what other areas um could this be related to that is a really great question. Um, so that is something that is still being researched, but what we what we do see is that earwigs are considered, um, also considered pests um, with certain um, palm fruits. So I think cherries is one and uh, they, cherries and peaches. Um, and I've always thought that this is because they're softer, but this is kind of a guess. Um, so cherries and peaches are, they're also considered pests, but it's interesting with the apple system, they're really, um, in apples, they're really considered natural enemies. Um, so it seems very system dependent, um, on what crop you're talking about, on what your, what role earwigs play. Cool. That's great. And so the next question that we have is, do you have a favorite type of insect uh, that you get to study or even just one that you don't study that you think is really interesting? Oh, yeah. Um, so I would say that my favorite insect uh, is actually an American bearing beetle. Um, they are endangered and they are decomposers, which means that they eat dead things. Um, but they are really, really beautiful beetles. They're big, they're black and orange, and I really encourage everyone to check that out. Um, I think they're really cool insects. Um, and I do actually really like looking at uh, studying earwigs. They're kind of they kind of gross a lot of people out, but there's a lot of things that people don't know about earwigs. Like they actually take care of their young, and when they're nymphs, um, they're kind of they're kind of cute looking. Um, that's great. And so another person asked if the earwigs you're talking about are the same type that we might find around our house or eating in wood or uh, um, logs um, when we're in our backyards. That is another great question. I should have really mentioned that. So throughout my talk, I just say earwigs. I am only referring to a specific species of earwigs, the um, European earwig or Forficula auricularia. But this, um, the reason I just say earwig throughout my talk is because this is the earwig that you're most likely to encounter in your house, in your garden, everywhere. So it's a very common, very abundant earwig. Um, is the European earwig. So cool. that's a great question. Um, that's great. And the the last question that I have for you today is if do you have any advice or suggestions for someone who's interested in doing their own type of science project or research, um, but might be just starting out in middle or high school? Yeah, so I would say um, reach out to different labs. Um, so look for local universities. Um, if you live in the area, UC Davis is a big um, ecology and entomology hub. And there's a lot of professors um, that are there and you can look at the research that they do. 
and find someone that you're kind of interested in their research and send them an email um, and see if you can get involved in their lab because most of the most of the professors that I know would love if you reached out to them and wanted to help out with some experiments um, or design your own. I would suggest that it's nice to start out working on someone else's project for a bit um, before you before you try to design your own. Um, although um, I think doing it at the same time could be cool too while you're learning how scientists do a project then you can kind of launch your own side project and investigation and so i think that's another way to go about it just be bold and um send emails to to different people that are involved and um i mean i i think that they're often really glad to have people reach out to them um but also, um, learn about the, you know learn about the topics that you're especially interested in because it'll really benefit you in the future. That's great. Um, thank you so much for that awesome advice and taking the time out of your day to share um, with us all about your research. I know a lot more about earwigs than I did before. <laughs> And so this is this is awesome. We really appreciate you sharing this with us and all of the students out there watching from home. Yeah, and thank you for your excellent questions. And this was really great for me to be able to share. Perfect. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with the rest of your research as well. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye. Take care, everyone.